a, a weird season for the Steelers because I still think if they get into the playoffs, right? You know, look, I I, I wrote I, t- I taped this out last night on Twitter. I tweeted it even. Oh yeah. The AFC quarterback situation this year, last year to this year, last year it was Brady, Roethlisberger, and then Alex Smith, Marcus Mariota, Blake Bortles, Tyrod Taylor. This year, it's Brady again. But Mahomes, MVP Mahomes, Deshaun Watson, Lamar Jackson in that crazy offense, Phillip Rivers, and now Andrew Luck. So if Big Ben was in there for Lamar Jackson, like Lamar's still got question marks as a passer. Imagine if Big Ben was in the playoff picture. They're, you know, when you have – they're all top ten quarterbacks production-wise. So if you have Big Ben in that mix, they're as dangerous as anybody. So weird year for the Steelers where they're a scary team if they're in the playoffs, but they're not in. Right. Um, and really, it's just come down to the fact that, it, it, well, it's depending on which way you look at it, right? Either the fact that they randomly laid eggs against terrible teams, Oakland, etc., yep, or that they were just not quite able to beat a couple of good teams. You know, they lost a really close game to the Saints. They lost to the Chargers. Right. Um, you know, depending on which which way you want to focus, they've either nobody but themselves to blame because they really should be beating Oakland, or they were just not quite good enough to get it done against teams that they're going to have to beat if they get to the playoffs anyway. But those games showed that this team is well capable of beating those teams if they got to the playoffs. I, I think the AFC ended up being as chaotic as the NFC in terms of pretty much any of the teams that get it in did. there can make some noise. Yeah. Um, like the Chargers are one of the best teams. They're in as a, a wild card. Because they all have viable quarterbacks and reasonable right. defenses. The Ravens, we've Kansas said... City are a horrible matchup for most of these high-powered offensive teams. And then the Steelers, had they made it, I think could go toe-to-toe with any of those high-powered passing teams. And have shown, at least against the Patriots, that they're capable of crafting a one-off game plan to stop them. Now, they right. only did it once, but they've at least shown they're able to. I, I haven't run numbers on the Steelers' schedule, but it looks difficult. I mean, when you just look at it, right? It's a pretty difficult schedule because they had to play the AFC West, which included the Chiefs and the Chargers Mm -hmm. this year, of course. And then when you're playing the first-place schedule, you have to play New England and you have to play Jacksonville, who won their division. Now, they won both of those games, but the the grind of they lose to the Raiders, which was their own fault. That's bad, right? But it's at Oakland, you know, whatever. But then the next week they had to play New England and New Orleans, right? And they put everything into beating the Patriots and then had to come back the next week and go to New Orleans and try to beat them in the Dome. It's just a tough schedule. In the AFC West, when they had to play Denver, they had to play them on the road. They lost there. Um, you know, they did a good job in the, against the NFC South because, on paper, going against the Falcons, the Panthers, and the Saints and Bucks, you know, those aren't uh, those aren't easy games. The Bucks gave them a really good game. Um, they had to play the Ravens twice. You know, so in, in the in the Browns with Baker once, and with Tyrod the other time. So, <laughs> look, it's not an easy schedule. Um, right. I mean, they put up thirty-seven points against the Chiefs came off second best. They, you know, came off a 33-30 loss to the Chargers. Like, it is, it is a tough schedule. Um, all right, I like this system, right? Primary cause of death for the Pittsburgh Steelers this year, Steve. Honestly, I think, I think there was some, I think there was some Roethlisberger regression that hurts them. You want to know if you were... Le'Veon Bell? No, 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 no. Not doing that. But... Uh, with the final games still to get reviewed, etc., Kirk Cousins has a higher grade than Ben Roethlisberger. Yeah, so the, this is where I don't know if it was all Big Ben. It, so it depends on how you look at it. Big Ben, from a positively graded throw standpoint, I think was I think he ended up top five. So when you talk about a value add guy, right? Extremely good. But if you look at the throws that he missed this year, mm-hmm. and this is where this is important, why we say his playmakers helped him a lot. He had so many open throws that he missed this year, meaning his guys were getting open. He threw for over 5,000 yards, and it could have been way better. right? So the yeah. production ended up getting there, but it just it was very inefficient along the way. Big Ben had a ton of turnover-worthy plays, got away with a bunch, th- still threw a bunch of key interceptions, and he had the highest percentage of, hit of misses in years. So, yeah, I know but, it's tough to add up directly from... Uh, you don't have it. In but front, how but. much is that... I mean, how much... How different is the perception, right? It's Kirk Cousins is an $84 million flop. He's been a disaster. He's the reason the Vikings are sitting at home. And who is talking about Big Ben being the reason the Steelers are sitting at home? 
Roethlisberger has a worse grade we threw for 5, than Kirk Cousins. Sense. He has a worse grade than Matthew Stafford, who people are talking about being a disaster this year. He's got a worse grade than Andy Dalton. Um, like, Roethlisberger was not good this year. He is the reason that Antonio Brown had a down year. Like, he was just missing Antonio Brown, an yeah. absolute ton. Now, the Antonio Brown down year talk has gone away a little bit as well because he got a bunch of touchdowns. But Antonio Brown's grade this year has been a disaster compared to the previous seasons because Roethlisberger was missing him. And you can't, you, know, you can't get a good grade, essentially, without the quarterback helping you out on the back end because he's the guy putting the ball where you need to get it. So I, I think a big part of it is you look at Roethlisberger's grades week one through five, they were bad. He, yeah. was, he was among the b- bottom you know, four or five quarterbacks, starting quarterbacks in the NFL. He did get better down the stretch, you know, did have a bunch of good games. But even the Oakland game, he made the big comeback with injury the grades were showing him throwing the ball through defenders that were getting caught for touchdowns so the ultimate production got there um so I, so th- so here's the thing that's why i don't think big ben himself i don't think the bad grade hurts the team that much hmm. as much as as because the ultimate production got there because juju stepped up and was great right and because vance mcdonald stepped up and was great the other thing that's that differentiates cousins so while the grades are similar average to meh. Um, Kirk Cousins was among the five most pressured quarterbacks in the NFL. Roethlisberger was the least pressured quarterback in the NFL. A much better situation. So again, we, like we said before, the, there isn't that much difference between those two offenses, except one has the best offensive line in the league. The other one has a terrible one. And this year, the, the quarterback situation was pretty much the same, except Roethlisberger made more big-time throws, but then he also had a dramatically better platform to work from. I still think ultimately, and that's fair, ultimately it's still their defense. So you're going primary cause of death, the defense? Yeah, because when they needed the defense, Saints 31 points and Chargers 33 points, and they they had a great game against New England. You know, they figured figured that out. Well, they threw everything at that. But like when they had essentially, yes, they put everything into the Patriots game plan that week. Both when they had to shut down a good offense, and this is what we're saying, defense is often dependent on who you're playing. What can you do to slow down the Chiefs? They couldn't. Mahomes had six touchdowns against them. They couldn't slow down the Saints when they needed to. They couldn't slow down the Chargers when they had that huge lead. Ultimately, it's this defense, um, kind of similar to the Patriots. They pretty much do a good job beating up on bad QBs and bad situations. But when they face the good guys, very rarely are they throwing out that New England game where they played well. Yes, that is true. Um, If you were identifying the problem with the defense, what would you say it is? I still think it's on the back end. They so, started to get more – like Watt was really good. J, TJ Watt was really good getting pressure in the second half of the season, but they don't get pure edge pressure the way the really good Steelers defenses did back in the day. It was James Harrison and Lamar Woodley, right, consistent three, pressure off the edge. Three first-round picks into this, only one of them has turned out okay. Right. Bud Dupree still has an issue and all that stuff, but still like on the back end, inconsistency from Sean Davis. I know Terrell Edmonds was better than we expected, but still not worth really a first-round pick just yet. Um, Joe Hayden did some nice things, which was great. But when you had to throw Cody Sensabaugh out there, you know he was up and down. There's just too many questions on the back end. Yeah. Artie Burns struggled when he was out there. There really isn't enough talent on this defense. And when you face the best teams or the best offenses in the NFL, it, it's typically exposed. You've also got to question the fact that their defensive coordinator didn't appear to know who he was about to face in Week 17. He was uh, concerned about how they were going to cover Tyler Eifert. Both who, Tylers. Who'd been on IR. Yeah, so we were like... Oh, you know, he obviously well, the, just misspoke. The I mean, Steelers, half the Bengals roster is called the Tyler. The Steelers.com guy took the blame for a bad interview and setting him up with well, he would, bad research. Wouldn't he? Steelers.com? Well, it was a bad interview. It was, it was poorly researched. Well, I'm I've just saying. I've made mistakes before in my life, too, but that was, that was a poor one. Right. It, so it, so we, we were like, oh, it's obviously, you know, half the Bengals offense is called Tyler. He obviously meant Tyler Croft, the replacement for Tyler Eifert, also on IR. Okay, maybe you meant Tyler Boyd, receiver in the slot, been credible this season, also on IR. There was no actual Tyler who was healthy at that point in the season who could have played <laughs> in Week 17. So it was basically an yeah. unsavably bad mistake. Now, the idea that, okay, he wasn't the guy that brought it up. He didn't unprompted say, yeah, this Tyler Eifert guy is going to be a problem. Somebody asked him about Tyler Eifert. So, yes... The Steelers guy, the Steelers.com guy, screwed up in that he asked him about a guy who wasn't healthy. Having said that, you would kind of expect the guy preparing to face that opposition to say, 
I'm going to stop you there, Chief. Uh, Tyler Eifert's been on IR for a couple of months. You would expect it. And his replacement, Tyler Croft, also on IR. And, in fact, the other Tyler in that offense, Boyd, also on IR. So I I, I can't do anything with that question. (laughs) But, no, he rolled with it and just, yeah, well, that's going to be an issue. Wasn't good. It's going to be an issue. So I I would say cause of death for the Steelers was more the defense. But but legitimately, that that plays into those games like the Chargers game where Keenan Allen in the slot is like kryptonite. They don't know what to do with it. Yeah, they had linebackers covering him the entire time. And I get that you might roll into a game that way, but you you know that's an issue coming in and you'd make an adjustment because you had a game plan for it. If you don't know who the opposition is or what they do, like how, how, how are you supposed to stop them? Cause of death defense. Primary Laying an egg, death. primary cause of death. Laying an egg against the Oakland Raiders. Secondary cause of death. Secondary. Tertiary? That's Big Ben. Big Ben. Because they, okay. as, as well as he played down the stretch, struggles early in the season. That's when they were losing games and tying games. Better Big Ben play and they're in the right. playoffs. So Big Ben, the same tertiary cause of death as Kirk Cousins. Just like Kirk Cousins. Yeah, They're perfect. the same guy. Excellent. 